Preface Egyptians have been known for their wonderful style of preserving the bodies of the dead and their pyramids. For about thirty centuries from 3100 BC till it was conquered by the Alexander the Great in 332 BC, Egypt was a well-known civilization. Their splendid pyramids and intricate wall designs in their palaces enchanted the archaeologists and the entire world. The history of Egypt can be known by pyramids, objects, monuments and artefacts that have been uncovered from the archaeological findings. The hieroglyphics containing many stories of the ancient past have been deciphered recently. The beauty of Egypt's majesty can be seen through these remainings. Their richness in their culture, heritage, tradition and religion was unmatchable during the ancient times. Ancient history of Egypt begins from the pre-dynastic period and ends with the conquest of Alexander the Great. Introduction Situated beside the River Nile, Egypt is a beautiful country in North Africa and also home to one of the most developed civilizations in the history of the world. The original name of Memphis, Hwatkap Ptah, which literally means Mansion of the Spirit of Ptah, was pronounced as Aegyptus in Greek. It is from Aegyptos that the modern pronunciation for Egypt has been taken. Memphis was an important city in ancient Egypt and also its first capital. The Egyptians called their nation Kemet, which means Black Land. The name was given after the dark and fertile soil which was found on the banks of River Nile. The first settlements were all along the River Nile. Egypt was then called Mesr, meaning of which is country. The Egyptians still refer to their country by this name. They excelled in fields of science and technology, art and architecture, astronomy, medicine and religion. The pyramids, which stand strong till today, are the proof of their intelligence which they had in the field of science, using which they built these gigantic structures. Egyptians are mostly known for preserving their dead and giving them luxurious burial rites. To them, life was just a part of their eternal journey, which their immortal souls had to continue after their physical bodies were lifeless. This is why their bodies were preserved and they were buried with jewellery, pottery and there were some tombs of famous pharaohs that have been found to have soldiers buried with them. Egyptian history is truly enchanting and more you come to know about them the more one wishes to witness their grandeur in real life. There is proof of overgrazing cattle where now lies the Sahara Desert which has been dated back to 8000 BCE. This, along with other evidence of artefacts that have been excavated, clearly point that agriculture flourished in the region, and since the lands of Egypt were dry, even back then, the nomadic hunters began to settle down in the valley of River Nile for fresh water in about 6000 BCE. The Badarian culture began to settle down beside the river, and farming became much more organized. Workshops dating back to 5500 BCE related to glazed pottery known as faience have also been found in Abydos. The Badarians were followed by Amaritian, Gerzian and Naquada. Every culture was unique and contributed much to the Egyptian culture. Egypt's written history begins from about 3400 BCE when the hieroglyphic script was developed by the Nakatas. Mummification became popular by 3500 BCE, especially in the city of Hieraconopolis. The Palermo stone carries an inscription which describes the city of Xois to be ancient by 3100 and 2181 BC. The growing cultures expanded and became bigger urban civilizations, thus expanding and enriching the history of Egypt. Chapter 1 Pre-Dynastic Period Egypt was home to more greenery than compared to what the lands are today. This is why there is mention of herd grazing in these lands. Hunting was common among the Egyptians, which is why animal domestication was common. The nomadic hunters settled down beside the river Nile and took to farming which further gave way to more development of pottery, religion, art and culture, politics and religion. There were some important cultures which grew in Egypt in this period. Badari, 
Amrashan or Nakada the first, Gezu or Nakada the second, and Nakada the third. Although the Tassian culture followed the Padari, but the similarities among the two cultures were so much that they are taken under one period. Black top wear type of pottery was the specialty of the Padari. The El Ambra site, which is just 120 kilometers south from Badari, is where the Ambraian culture gets its name from. Although the black top pottery have been found a new type of pottery, which is referred to as white cross line ware, have also been discovered. There were many developments in the Ambraian period, such as there were mud brick buildings, cosmetic palettes that have a very simple craftsmanship have also been found. The foundation of dynastic period in Egypt was laid in the Gersian culture, which was Nakada II. Gersian pottery was painted red with pictures of ships, animals or people, along with some geometric shapes which usually resemble the animals. The handles of the pottery were now wavy and with time they became ornamental. There have evidence found which indicate that the culture was influenced by foreign culture such as Mesopotamian, Arabian and other civilizations. The Nakada III period of Egypt is identical to the time when Egypt was unified. It is in this period that the hieroglyphics was first developed. There were other firsts too, such as the first royal cemeteries, first serics, which were vignettes that comprised of a plan of the royal courtyard and a rough look of the palace at first irrigation. In 3200 BC, there were two pharaohdoms established. One was Upper Egypt and the other was Lower Egypt. There is an ongoing debate on who united both Upper and Lower Egypt, Menes or Namer. There is more historical evidence on Namer having united Egypt. However, archaeologists and specialists have their own theories to prove that Menes was the first pharaoh to have united Upper and Lower Egypt. Chapter 2 Early Dynastic Period This period follows immediately after the Upper and Lower Egypt were unified. Usually the first and second dynasties are come under this period. When the first dynasty came into existence, then Memphis was made the capital of Egypt. Abydos was an important centre for religion. Egypt was now ruled by a pharaoh who was also considered equivalent to God. Proper administration was established throughout and governors were appointed to look after the many villages. With the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt, even the towns and societies in these regions underwent a process of unification. Narmer has been shown on the palette where he is seen wearing double crown. The crown depicts papyrus reed which represents the Lower Egypt and lotus flower which is a symbol of Upper Egypt. Narmer also appears first on the pharaoh's list of Den and Qua. The wealthy people of Egypt wanted something special for those who departed. They constructed mastabas which were flat, rectangular structures sloping inwards made of mud bricks. Mastabas were actually the basis for better buildings, like the steppe pyramids. Unification of Upper and Lower Egypt had happened in this period. Egypt was already unified economically and culturally. However, this political unification helped in developing trade and in running Egypt in a more civilized and planned way. Egyptian writing also was expanded more and now included about 200 ideograms and phonograms. There is a dispute between Narmer and Menes. Some of them say Menes and Narmer were same, but some say that they were different. Narmer has many archaeological proofs about his existence and he being the first pharaoh of the first dynasty. Chapter 3 The period in which the third to the sixth dynasties of Egypt flourished is commonly referred to as the period of old pharaohdom in Egypt. The old pharaohdom was an important phase for the Egyptians. The capital was still Memphis, which is a modern name of Ineb Hedg. What marks the differentiation among the two periods is the distinct architecture from both periods. The pharaoh was a god for its subjects and had services and wealth of its people at his back and core. Pharaoh Djoser was the first pharaoh of the old pharaohdom of the fourth dynasty and ruled between 2691 and 2625 BC roughly. The steppe pyramid of Djoser in Saqqara is a famous remaining from his time. Imhotep was an important person from the court of Pharaoh Djoser. He was a chancellor to the pharaoh and high priest of sun god Ra at Heliopolis. 
Even though Imhotep was a commoner, he was given a divine status after he died. It was the period of the Fourth Dynasty that all the rulers of the ancient Egyptian states were asked to work in the tax collections or as governors for the pharaoh. Fourth Dynasty also saw much development and Pharaoh Sneferu ordered to build three pyramids. The building technique of pyramids was not as good until the Pyramid of Giza was built by Khufu, who was the son of Sneferu. Khufu ruled from 2589 to 2566 BC. After his death, his first successor, Jedefra, ruled from 2566 to 2558 BC and was then succeeded by his brother, Khafra, whose reign was from 2558 to 2532 BC. Khafra built the second largest pyramid and the Sphinx at Giza. Pharaoh Menkaure from this dynasty, who was also the son of Khafra, has been known to have constructed the smallest pyramid in Giza. Shepsis Kaf and Jedef Tach were the pharaohs who followed him. Uzar Kaf was the first pharaoh of Fifth Dynasty, and the period is known for being a time when the sun god Ra had very high importance in the hearts of the Egyptians. Sun temples were constructed more than pyramids. Yunus was the last pharaoh of this dynasty and one of the earliest pharaohs who has inscriptions done on his pyramid. The Egyptians traded in mer, ebony, frankincense, copper, gold and other metals. They were inspired to build ships so they could navigate the sea. The ships in the ancient times were bound together with ropes and nothing else. There were no pegs, nails or metal fasteners. When the time came for the Sixth Dynasty, the power of the pharaohs seemed to have weakened for the governors gained more power. There were no more royal families heading these states. The local dynasties had taken over them. In the reign of Pepi II, from 2278 to 2184 BC, which was towards the end of the Sixth Dynasty, there was a state of chaos in Egypt. However, the situation worsened only after some of his heirs had ruled Egypt. There was a period of drought, the cause of which is unknown, but there were no floods in Nile from 2200 to 2150 BC. There was a period of famine and friction. There are many life-size sculptures that have been excavated from the old Pharadon period that are made of copper, wood and stone. Intricate designs of plants, creepers, animals and even sceneries have been carefully carved and painted on the walls of tombs and temples. The main aim of the artists of these times was to centre their effort on depicting life after death. Chapter 4 First Intermediate Period this period lasted for 125 years and is also referred to as the Dark Age in ancient history of Egypt. Dynasties from 7th to 10th, along with a part of 11th dynasty, are covered in this period. Chaos and disorder in Egypt led to the downfall of Old Pharadom. The main reason for the downfall of Old Pharadom is known for the elongated rule of Pepe II. He outlived many of his heirs, which caused tension in the royal family when it came to succession of the throne. The rise of provincial nomarchs was on the cause, because the families of a nomarch did not let go of the position, thus Mafaro there hold strong and gaining power. Finally, famine in Egypt swept the old pharaoh's existence. 7th and 8th Dynasties at Memphis there is very less information about the 7th and 8th dynasties of Egypt. A priest and historian, Manetho, from the Ptolemaic era, mentions about 70 pharaohs ruling for 70 days. However, this may just be an overemphasis about how disorganized the pharaohs were while they ruled. The 7th dynasty could also have been an oligarchy, which comprised of many officials who desired to gain control of the country. The 8th dynasty pharaohs claimed that they were the descendants of the 6th dynasty and ruled Memphis. There is hardly any architectural and textual evidence that will throw light on these periods. However, there are some artefacts and scarabs that have been recognized to belong to pharaoh Nefekare II. A small pyramid constructed by the pharaoh of 8th dynasty, pharaoh Ibi, has been found at Saqqara. There are many pharaohs from these two dynasties whose positions are not known clearly. Whose positions are not known clearly. Heraclepolitan pharaohs. In Lower Egypt, there rose 
the Heracleopolitan pharaohs, who came into power sometime when the 7th and 8th dynasty pharaohs were ruling. These pharaohs make up the 9th and the 10th dynasties, and every dynasty had 19 rulers that have been listed down. These rulers had taken over the weak rulers of Memphis and created the 9th dynasty. Aktoi, or Aktos, who was the founder of the Ninth Dynasty, has been identified as a cruel and violent ruler in Manetho's writings. Aktoi could possibly be the ruler Wakara Keti I. He was known to have harmed the people of Egypt, had become mad, and was ultimately killed by a crocodile. This definitely is not a story, because Wakara's name is listed in the Turin Canon, the list of Egyptian pharaohs. Wakara Keti I was succeeded by Meribri Keti II. There is not much text that has been found against him, but there are some artifacts that bear his name which have been found. His successor, Keti III, seemed to have bought some peace in Egypt, but the rulers of Ninth and the Tenth dynasties were not as significant and powerful as the pharaohs of the old pharaohdom. During the reign of the Ninth and Tenth dynasty, Pharaohs, nomarchs, and the Ashut had become quite powerful. Ashut or Seut was a powerful province, and these nomarchs had very close relations with the Heracleopolitan pharaohs. There are inscriptions found on their tombs which prove their powerful existence. These inscriptions also say that these nomarchs used to raise cattle, had dug canals, reduced the taxes, had rich harvests, and also maintained fleet and army. The province of Suet was just like a cushion between the southern and northern pharaohs, and the Suet nomarchs used to face the attacks from the Theban pharaohs. Theban pharaohs For the Heracleopolitan pharaohs were Tafaro over Lower Egypt. Simultaneously, the Theban pharaohs were Tafaro over the Upper Egypt. They formed the 11th and 12th dynasties of Egypt. Theban pharaohs rose from the nomarchs of Thebes, descendants of Intef to be precise. He is the one who founded the 11th dynasty. His name comes up in the chapel of royal ancestors, which has been erected at Karnak. Intef II and the III attacked the north and captured Abydos and moved into Middle Egypt and rose against the Heracleopolitan pharaohs. The last three pharaohs of the first intermediate period became the first three pharaohs of the 11th dynasty. The pharaohs that followed were all men to Hotep. Mentuhotep II, referred to as Nebhepetra, was the one who defended the Heracleopolitan pharaohs in 2033 BC and unified Egypt. The defeat of the Heracleopolitan pharaoh brought forth the Middle Pharaohdom period in Egypt. The Ipua Papyrus is an important literary piece which refers to this period and mentions about the decline in the international relations and hardships in Egypt at this time. The pharaohs of Memphis held on to their traditional art and culture, but the quality of their art had declined. The wooden coffins used for burial were more elaborate, and the coffins were painted in their interior, with spells and maps designed for the dead, with a thought to be used in their afterlife. The Thebans brought more provincial style of art, but their style was not refined. However, the artisans used bright colours in their paintings, and the human figure was distorted by them. The rolls had rock-cut tombs for them, which were not decorated, because there were hardly any skilled artists around in that period. Chapter 5 Middle Pharaohdom of Egypt This was the period of reunification in Egypt between 2050 BC and 1800 BC. It started with Mentuhotep II, who belonged to the 11th dynasty, defeating the last Heracleopolitan pharaoh, and the period ended with the 12th dynasty. There are some scholars who also add 13th dynasty, which means the middle pharaohdom would then end on 1650 BC. There are others who consider the period till Merneferi I, 700 BC. This was the last pharaoh of dynasty to be indicated in Upper and Lower Egypt. Reunification of Egypt and the 11th dynasty Mentuhotep II defeated the Heracleopolitan pharaoh of the 10th dynasty and took over the throne in 2055 BC, establishing the period of the 11th dynasty in the Memphis area also, thus reuniting Egypt once more. Mentuhotep is also referred to as the founder of Middle Pharaohdom. The lost supremacy was restored to Egypt. 
He wore the headdress of Amun and Min and ruled for fifty-one years, passing his throne to his son, Menuhotep III. Menuhotep III strengthened the Theban rule on Egypt and built many forts in the eastern delta area so that Egypt would be safe from threats which were rising from Asia. The last pharaoh of the eleventh dynasty seems to be Mentuhotep IV, but his name has been omitted in the list of the Egyptian pharaohs. Turin Papyrus speaks of a period of seven years in Egypt when there were no pharaohs. However, Wadi Hammamat, a site which carries carvings and graffiti which date from early Egyptian dynasties to modern times, speaks of his expeditions to the Red Sea. Inscriptions at Ain Sukna and Wadi al Hudi also speak of his expedition. Even though Mentuhotep IV is not mentioned in the list of pharaohs, there is a clear mention of a big expedition while he reigned. His vizier, Amenemhat I, was also part of an expedition. Amenemhat I is also known to be the founder of the 12th dynasty. Since Mentuhotep's name is absent from the list of pharaohs, many researchers say that his vizier, Amenemhat I, took over his throne. There also exists some evidence about a civil war that happened when the 11th dynasty was coming to an end. Whatever the reason may be, it is definite that Amenekhmet I was not of royal birth. 12th dynasty All the pharaohs of this dynasty kept armies. The founder of the 12th dynasty, Amenekhmet I, further fortified between Egypt and Asia. He also built a new capital in the north and named it Amenemhet I TJ Tui, which translates as Amenemhet, seizure of two lands. The exact location of this capital of Egypt is not known, but it may be near the present day of El Lisht. Irrespective of this power and authority, he did not have the same command as the pharaohs of Old Kingdom. Nomarchs had become powerful from the first intermediate period, and their posts were taken over by their sons. Amenemhat I, to get a hold on Egypt, changed the borders of gnomes in Egypt, had the lands registered, and when there was a position of a nomarch empty, he appointed one directly. However, he always kept the nomarchs happy because he needed their support to rule Egypt. There was a feudal organization in Egypt. Amenemhat I made his son Senusret I his co-regent. A co-regent is a situation when the monarchical position is held by two or more people. This practice would be done by more pharaohs in the next two periods. Amenemhat I became a victim of a conspiracy and was murdered while he was in his thirtieth year of rule. Senusret was not home when his father was murdered and was in a campaign against the Libyan invaders and rushed back to Ijtawai to prevent the conspirers from usurping the throne. Like his father, he continued to appoint nomarchs directly and built cult centers all over Egypt and weakened the growing power of local priests. He took over Nubia, an oasis, and made it a part of Egypt. He also made contacts with Syria-Palestine and went up to Ugarit. Senserit appointed his son Amenemhat II as his co-regent during his forty-third year of rule and died in his forty-sixth year of reign. Amenemhat II reigned peacefully, though his Genet or Daybook, which are preserved on the walls of the Todd and Memphis temples, speak of peace treaties with Syria-Palestinian cities and fight with the others. Unlike his grandfather and father, Amenemhat II left the monarch positions to be hereditary once again. In his thirty-third year of reign, he made his son Sensuret II a co-regent. Sensuret II concentrated on developing Egypt domestically, such as the irrigation system in Fayum. This turned Fayum into a productive land. Sensuret II's pyramid can be found at the site of El Lahun. He ruled for fifteen years, the proof of which is the many constructions which he started, but were left incomplete. He was succeeded by his son, Sensuret III. Powerful Period of Middle Kingdom Sensuret III was a field king and was seen campaigning quite often. He had many victories in his bucket and also built many forts in entire Egypt. His campaigns were mostly against Nubia, and the boundary was built to demarcate the unconquered lands of Nubia from Egypt. He appointed officers on these forts and had them send regular reports on the happenings in the borders.
They would hand over the report to Medjai, who were a part of the parliamentary police force of Egypt, and would give these reports to the king. They were also protectors of important areas and regions that had value, such as tombs and palaces. They were a lead group of warriors who the king kept close. A soldier from the army of Sensura III has recorded a campaign to Palestine, probably against Shechem, but the flow of Nile did not support their ships and they had to turn back. This campaign against Palestine seems to be the only one in the literature of Middle Kingdom. Sensura III's administrative reforms are known to be quite impressive. Egypt was divided into administrative zones, and every zone was looked after by a reporter, second reporter, and a council which comprised of officials. The nomarchs were not powerful during this time, and the central government was more powerful under Sansura III's rule. Sansura III was powerful and tactful in his reign, that he suppressed the power of these nomarchs without taking any direct action against them. He was worshipped by the Egyptian people in Nubia, who looked up to him as a patron god. The number of years Sensura III ruled is not known exactly, but his son, Amenekme III, is known to have taken over the throne after nineteen years of his rule, but in the archaeological remains of his mortuary temple shows thirty-nine years, which means that he continued to reign as a co-regent for a long time along with his son. Egypt's prosperity soared high in Amenekhmet III's rule. Mining camps have been found in Sinai, which show that there were more than 2,000 workers working there. Amenekhmet III followed his father's footsteps and fortified the defences in Nubia. He ruled for 45 years and was succeeded by his son, Amenekhmet IV, who ruled for about nine years, but his rule was not even near to how his father and grandfather ruled. The dynasty began declining in his rule. Although there are some records of crop failures in the end of Amenekhmen's third's rule, which may also have been the cause for the decline of this dynasty. Another cause for the decline was that Amenekhmen III ruled for too long, which caused problems in succession. Amenekhmen IV did not leave back any male heir and was then succeeded by his sister, Sobekneferu. She is the first female pharaoh to have been historically attested. She ruled for just four years and died without leaving any heirs. With her death, the twelfth dynasty also came to an end, giving way to the second intermediate period and a weak thirteenth dynasty. Chapter 6 Second Intermediate Period The second intermediate period was a time when Egypt once was face to face with chaos. Queen Sobekneferu left no heir hence, and with her death also ended the twelfth dynasty. The thirteenth dynasty ruled from Ichtawi. The kings of this dynasty were unable to keep the territories of Egypt under their control and slowly gave way to 14th dynasty, who were a family from Avaris. The 15th dynasty lasted from 1650 BC to 1550 BC and were known as Hiskos. This dynasty was a mix of Greek and Western Asia who had settled down in the Nile Delta not much before 1650 BC. They ruled from Avaris and preferred to stay in northern parts of Egypt as they belonged to northeast. The order of kings who ruled in this dynasty is not known clearly, but according to the Turin list, there were six kings from this dynasty. Kamudi was the last. The 16th dynasty ruled the Theban region in Upper Egypt for 70 years. The 15th and the 16th dynasties were always fighting each other, and this is why the rule of 16th dynasty did not last for long. Memphis and Ichtawi were taken over by Hiskos. The native Egyptian ruling house in Thebes broke away from Ichtawi and started a new 17th dynasty. The rulers from this dynasty returned back the Theban temples to its lost glory. Sekenere, Tao and Kamose were the last two kings of this dynasty and have also been credited with defeating the Hyksos. In 1550 BC, the 18th dynasty was formed and the new kingdom of Egypt began with Ahmose I, the first pharaoh finally driving the Hyksos out from Egypt. Egypt was finally under the control of the Egyptians. Chapter 7 New Kingdom The period covered the 18th, 19th and 20th dynasties. Archaeological evidences say that the period of New Kingdom was between 1570 BC and 1544 BC. This period is when Egypt prospered and its power was in its peak. 
in the rule of the 19th and 20th dynasties, the period is referred to as the Ramessid period, named after 11 pharaohs who took the name Ramses I, the founder of the 19th dynasty. Thutmose I and his grand and his grandson Thutmose III extended the boundaries of Egypt. The pharaohs of New Kingdom were builders, and they campaigned to promote God Amun, a cult that was based in Karnak. The fifth pharaoh of the New Kingdom was a female, and the second one to be historically confirmed. Her name was Hatshepsut, and came to the throne in the year 1478 BC. She came to rule the throne with Thutmose III, who at that time was just about two years old. She restored trade and promoted peace in Egypt. Her reign was quite peaceful, and Egypt prospered under her twenty-two years of reign because of the trade routes she had restored. In 1350 BC, when Amenhotep IV came to rule Egypt, there was a series of chaotic reforms the nation was going through. He tried to suppress the power of the priests of Amun in Thebes, as he thought they were bad, and he asked the people to worship the sun god Aten, whose importance was lost long back. He also moved the capital to Akhetaten. However, after his death, the new pharaohs went back to their old traditions, and the Theban priests regained the power once again. Ramses III is considered as the last great pharaoh of the 20th dynasty, and in his reign the sea people invaded Egypt, but Ramses III and his army defeated them in two battles, one of which was fought on land and the other on sea. There were more wars that Egypt had to face, and all these wars draining the treasure of Egypt. Ramses III was followed by weak pharaohs, and by the time Ramses XI came on the throne, that even when he was on the throne, Smendes began taking control of Lower Egypt. Smendes founded the 21st dynasty at Tanis. Chapter 8 Third Intermediate Period The death of Ramses XI marked the end of the 20th dynasty and the new kingdom. This was a time of political instability and decline. The priests of Thebes had become quite powerful. Although Smendes I, who found the 21st dynasty, was ruling from Tanis, his power was only limited to Lower Egypt. The high priests of Amun at Thebes had become quite powerful. Although their names haven't been officially as kings, but Upper and Middle Egypt was under their control. This was because priests and pharaohs belonged to the same family. Shosheng I founded the 22nd dynasty in 945 BC. Egypt was much stable under him, but this lasted only for 100 years. Egypt was divided into two when Osurkon II came to rule. Middle and Upper Egypt was controlled by Takalot II and Osurkon III, and Lower Egypt was with Shosheng III, who belonged to the 22nd dynasty. These two divisions were always at war, which ended after 39 years, and with this war was founded the 23rd dynasty, which did not last long, and ended with Rudamun. The pharaohs of 24th dynasty ruled for a very short time. They had their capital at Saiz, and the first pharaoh of this dynasty was Tefnacht I, who came on throne in 732 BC. Pai was the one to establish the 25th dynasty, and his sons, Shebitku and Aharka, united the Nile Valley Empire, just like it was in the New Kingdom. The pharaohs of this dynasty were quite spiritual, and were all buried in Napata. The Napatan dynasty led to the kingdom of Kush, which prospered in Meroe and Napata till the 2nd century. Assyria was gaining power during this time, and they had more weapons than the Egyptians who did have wealth and was big in size. In 664 BC, the Assyrians sacked Memphis and Thebes. Lower Egypt was ruled by 26th dynasty, who were client kings that were established by the Assyrians. Something the first captured Thebes in 656 BC and ruled both Upper and Lower Egypt. There was stability in the land, and he ruled from Saiz. Between 610 BC and 525 BC, there were four more kings who ruled the land in peace. However, there was a new power which was slowly rising, Persians. Egypt was helpless in front of their army, and Psamtik III was captured and executed. Persian king Cambyses took the title of Pharaoh. Chapter 9 Late Period some of the last kings of the 26th dynasty up to the 31st dynasty are included in the late period. 
The Brooklyn Papyrus is one of the important contributions in this period. This medical papyrus comprises of a systematic explanation of snakes and also the medicine for the snake bites. Also included is treatment for scorpion and spider bites. The 27th dynasty comprised of eight pharaohs. Amirtus was the only pharaoh of the 28th dynasty and he rebelled against the Persians. Mendes was the pharaoh who began the 29th dynasty and it ended in the 380 BC. Three pharaohs ruled the 30th dynasty till the 343rd BC and the Persians reoccupied Egypt. The 31st dynasty had four pharaohs who ruled Egypt and all of them were Persians. The last ruler in this period was Darius III and his rule ended in 332 BC. Chapter 10 Ptolemaic Period Alexander the Great invaded Egypt in 332 BC. The Persians couldn't stop him and the Egyptians welcomed his presence. The oracle of Amun at the oasis of Siwa said that he was the son of Amun. Although he showed respect towards the religion of Egyptians, the Macedonians were appointed in high posts. He found a Greek city, Alexandria, and made it the capital. He left Egypt with Cleomenes on the throne and moved towards Phoenicia in 331 BC. Alexander never returned back to Egypt. The time when Greeks ruled in Egypt is known as the Ptolemaic period. Hellenistic culture mixed with the Egyptians, yet the Egyptians never accepted them. There were revolts in the nation and the situation became so worse in some time that Rome had to send armies to secure the country. Some of the pharaohs who ruled in this period were Ptolemy I to thirteenth, Cleopatra VII, who is known for the beauty and shrewd nature. Cleopatra VII, or Cleopatra, as most people address her, was the last ruler of Ptolemaic Egypt. With her death, the Ptolemaic kingdom in Egypt came to an end. Cleopatra died in 30th BC. Chapter 11 Roman Period After the death of Cleopatra, Egypt became a province of Rome in 30 BC. Rome was dependent on Egypt for grains. Alexandria was an important centre of trade and the Romans loved exotic luxuries. The Romans proved to be more aggressive towards the Egyptians compared to the Greeks, but worship of gods and the tradition of mummification continued to happen. The Roman emperors also portrayed themselves as pharaohs, however, it was not as much as the Ptolemies did. In the middle of the first century AD, Christianity began to take roots. Those who converted were executed. Still, Christianity seemed to stand strong, and in 391 AD, Theodosius I, who was a Christian emperor, banned all pagan rites and shut down the temples. Alexandria saw several riots, and Egypt's native religion became to decline. The language of the Egyptians was still alive, but the culture of reading hieroglyphic writing was disappearing. The priests and priestesses of the Egyptian temples vanished. The temples were made into churches, and many of them were left to diminish in the deserts. Kings and pharaohs and emperors all rule Egypt, and even after many ups and downs in Egypt, it continued to be an important centre for the Roman Empire, as they fulfilled the agricultural needs of Rome. Conclusion What began with small settlements in the River Nile grew into an empire so vast whose history can never be forgotten. Every dynasty and every pharaoh had something to contribute to the exciting history of the Egyptians. Their intelligence was unbelievable and their knowledge about things seems to be unnatural. How do you think a pyramid was built? This seems to be possible with the techniques of today, but back then there was nothing automatic, no machines. Yet they made buildings so strong that they outlive centuries and stand high and strong so we can admire their beauty. Egypt has had a long history, sometimes peace and sometimes war, yet the grand jaw of the pharaohs and the magnificence of the city cannot be forgotten. Egypt is one of the most wondrous countries that Africa has. With its capital at Cairo, Egypt is one of the important centres of history, culture and traditions. Egypt is home to some of the most beautiful historical places and thousands of tourists flock here to admire what remains from the ancient past. About Intrabooks Intrabooks delivers up to the minute information covering everything on a topic in only one hour of reading. Our book have written to give essential information in a straight-to-the-point, easy-to-read format. 
we have cut out technical jargon, waffle and unnecessary filler to ensure you get the essential information you need to achieve your goals with confidence.